Okay, I am back with my uh, patient who is a 67-year-old man, negative biopsy one and a half years ago, PSA level of 24, pretty high. You think he would have cancer, but remember, all prostate glands make PSA. If you have enough BPH and you have enough uh, glandular activity, you can still have an elevated PSA and not have cancer. My purpose in this vignette is to introduce you to some of the descriptors some of which you're familiar with from breast imaging or MR if you do it. So let's start out with the term focus. A focus is more of a pinpoint area like that. That little white spot, that would be a focus. A localized finding that's distinct from neighboring tissues and it's not three-dimensional space occupying. In other words, it doesn't have mass effect. And a focal abnormality is kind of a synonym for a focus. Actually, a focal abnormality is any sized abnormality, um, and the focus is usually something that is more sort of pinpoint, millimeters in size, whereas a focal abnormality has some size to it, little mass effect, but is well defined from the rest of the structures. So there's, there's a little bit of nuance there. Index lesion. This is the highest PIRADS assessment category lesion. So if we were to have a PIRADS 5, a 3, and a 4, the PIRADS 5 would be considered the index lesion. And it is always measured. And sometimes it's even traced in three dimensions. It's also known as the dominant lesion. And I will put in my conclusion. Dominant index lesion is PIRADS 5 located right, PZ, mid, lateral etc. A lesion. Well, that's a localized pathological or traumatic structural change or area of damage, deformity, discontinuity of tissue, or organ, or body part. A mass. A mass has three-dimensional space occupying characteristics. Those of you that do breast imaging know the difference between a non-mass lesion. For instance, duct ectasia, DCIS, does not exhibit mass effect on surrounding tissues. Same thing for breast infarction, whereas invasive ductal ca carcinoma does. Same principles apply here. If you've got a lesion that is more wedge-shaped, like this one right here, more laminar in the peripheral zone, let's blow it up, then that is non-mass-like. Whereas if you have a lesion like this that is round and dark, even though it's not malignant, it is mass-like and in fact it's not completely smooth it's got a slight irregular it's got slight irregular edges along its anterior border but it didn't diffusion restrict and it wasn't hypervascular so we would leave a lesion like that alone a nodule this would correspond to a nodular form of mass so it's a subtype of mass it's a small clump or swelling of collection that is rounded in shape now, I like to define my nodules, this is just how I do it, as nodules that are fully encapsulated versus nodules that are poorly encapsulated. Because remember, from one of our prior vignettes, we said that if this gets really tense and really full of, BP, of BPH nodules, they can extrude into the peripheral zone. And when they do, they look like cancers, but they have a nice capsule around them. A non-focal abnormality is one that is not restricted to a single location. In fact, maybe multifocal is a better term for that, although the PIRADS2 designation lexicon does differentiate between non-focal versus multifocal. In non-focal, it's, it's more amorphous. You know, it's here, but there may be a few areas nearby, whereas multifocal, it is a situation of clear-cut multiple lesions in different territories. So that's a, that's a more uh, concrete term, and I use it more freely. I hardly ever use the term non-focal. Regional. Regional means it conforms to a prostate sector, sextant, zone, or lobe. There's an abnormal signal other than a mass involving a large volume of prostate tissue. So, for instance, in a case where you might have involvement all the way down low in the apex and it invades the fibromuscular stroma, 
we would say that it is regional. It's regional apical with fibromuscular stroma invasion. Or it could be completely right-sided in the middle of the gland. We would also confirm that something like that would be regional. And if it was in the medial as well as lateral, we'd say it's regional mid-gland, both medial or intermediate, and far lateral or lateral. Far lateral and lateral are synonyms. Medial and intermediate are synonyms. Shape. Round. That's self-explanatory. That's kind of round. Oval. Well, you've seen previously some lentiform cancers, and in fact, when cancers get pretty big, they pretty much have this shape. Let's see if I can do a little drawing for you. You saw one earlier. It looked kind of like this. Look, look a little bit like a banana. And a lot of big prostate cancers do that, especially when they cross from the CZ to the PZ. That's a very common appearance. It's also common on diffusion-restricted scenarios or diffusion images. Lentiform, having the shape of a double convex lens. So perhaps I made a little, little bit of an error here because lentiform would be this. Actually, I didn't make a mistake. You know, this would be a, an oval lesion, and this would be a lentiform lesion. So, you know, they, they're, they're very similar in, in, in their appearance, but one is a double convexity, and the other one is concave and convex. Not critically important, except just to, to know the descriptor. Lobulated composed of lobules with an undulating contour. So lobulated might look something like this. Just like it does in the breast. Some people will use the term polygonal or smooth but somewhat irregular. Water drop shape. Water drop shape is a lesion that has, I'll make my line a little bit thinner. The water drop shape looks like a teardrop of water, so it kind of looks like this. That's a little less common appearance, especially for uh, prostate carcinoma. But it differs from these two in that it, it comes to a point. Wedge-shaped. Well, here we have some examples of wedge-shaped right there. I'm not going to draw over it, but I'll draw its edges. That's somewhat wedge-shaped, and it doesn't have mass effect, and it doesn't bulge the capsule and it didn't diffusion restrict, and it wasn't low on the ADC map. I mean, those can either be fibrous septa, they can be scars, they can be scars from sites of prostatitis. And the wedge can be slightly wedge-shaped, or it can be a very broad wedge. It doesn't matter. They're both described the same way. So it can look like a piece of pie. It can be a large slice of pie or a thin slice of pie. Linear. Well, linear is very self-explanatory. It's when you just simply have a line. So let's see if I can spy something that is linear on our T2. Well, I think this is linear right here. Very hard to see, but right there. Very delicate and linear striations in the peripheral zone. So linear is not going to have much thickness to it. Irregular evenness. You know, irregular, or sorry, irregular. Irregular means lacking symmetry or evenness. So irregular is kind of an amorphous term. What's the difference between irregular and lobulated? In lobulated, you're denoting or connoting that even though it has this kind of edge to it, let's see if I can get my pen to. Even though it has this kind of edge to it, it's sort of smooth. Whereas irregular, it's going to have a much less curvilinear shape to it. It may be more jagged. I think I need a thinner pen for that. Irregular is going to be more jagged as opposed to this kind of wavy configuration. And irregular tends to have a slightly more smudgy peripheral architecture. Okay, margins. You've got well-circumscribed margins, sharp zone of transition, easy. 
in distinct margins or blurred margins. For instance, this has a very distinct margin here, but a little more irregular and blurred margin here. It's not as easy for me to tell where this starts and or where this stops and this starts. Obscured, not clearly seen or easily distinguished. Irregular, uneven, jagged, serrated. Now we're just talking margins now. Speculated, well that's easy. You know, speculated is going to look something like this. Kind of like a, a breast carcinoma. Radiating lines extending from the center of an area. Encapsulated. Encapsulated means you've got something that is usually pretty round or oval, and it is bound by a complete rim of a slightly different shade, usually darker. And that's going to happen with BPH nodules, even the ones that are extruded. Organized chaos. Well, that's commonly seen in the central zone and transitional zone with multiple lesions having circumscribed margins. Let's take a look at our central zone in this case. This kind of organized chaos. We've got a bright lesion with some pretty good encapsulation, one that's a little more lobulated but also encapsulated encapsulated. One that's a bit darker and you might say, well, how am I going to sort those out? Well, you're not just going to use the T2. You're going to look at the diffusion image, the ADC map, and the DCE MRI. But organized chaos is not the exception. It is rather the rule in the central and peripheral zone of the prostate. My favorite sign is the charcoal erasure sign, one that I actually coined for osteomyelitis on a T1 weighted image in the body for MSK. But it applies here too. Blurred margins in which you have a sensation of smudginess. So it's almost like you took an eraser and you just started painting in. I think I need a, a thicker line for this. So you have your eraser and you just start painting, painting in, and you lose the anatomy of all the areas that have been painted in. Usually with this type of smudging, the internal architecture of the smudge itself is pretty smooth, which is a little bit misleading. It's almost like the Karate Kid thing, you know, wax on, wax off. And it kind of has that waxy, almost circular look to it, but again, it's not very heterogeneous, and it has complete disrespect for the boundary between the CZTZ and the peripheral zone the so-called surgical capsule gets violated rather easily. Hyperintense. That's pretty straightforward. It's hyperintense relative to the surrounding background tissue. And what I might use as the surrounding background tissue in the central and transitional zone is the rest of the tissue. So if one nodule were to stand out. T2 hyperintensity is a term that's used that refers to higher signal intensity just in general. ISO intensity refers to equal signal to the standard tissue. So if I said something was ISO intense to water, it better look like cerebrospinal fluid in the CSF intradural space. Hypointense, darker than a standard, for instance, the fibromuscular zone is darker than anything else. It's hypointense relative to the CZ and TZ. T2 hypointensity just means that there's less signal intensity of that structure on the T2 weighted image compared to some of the other sequences and some of the other surrounding tissue. Now, what about markedly hypointense? Markedly hypointense means it's either almost black, black, or lossless, no signal. There aren't too many things that give you that. Pure, pure fibrous tissue. That would be markedly hypointense. Calcium would be markedly hypointense. Fast flow would be markedly hypointense. And the granddaddy of them all, air, is going to be markedly hypointense with lossless signal intensity. That concludes our discussion of what is meant by the terms that are put in the PIRATS 2.0 designation. Remember, these were created by men and women just like you. They are not set in stone. They are meant to be guidelines to help you produce a pattern 
that is recognizable to others in the profession, others of your colleagues, but also those in the urologic special specialties so that there's some consistency in how we talk to each other. Thanks.